Well, I'm Chris, and this is my Harbor Freight electric spray gun video. So I've uploaded a couple videos where I'm trying to figure out how to spray latex through a conventional spray gun. We're having some issues getting it thinned out enough to spray the way we want it. That's why we're going to test this gun out and see if it's going to give us some better results before we go to paint the real projects. So I have never used an electric sprayer in my life. And if you haven't, you need to read everything in this two or three times until you fully understand it. Everything that we do in this video is based off of the instructions. Notice, before first use, clean the spray gun thoroughly. We're going to go through that. And then it has this, apply a few drops of spray gun lubricant as indicated. So what is that? What does that even mean? So I got this from Lowe's for around $10 shipped to my house. It's a piston lubricant. It's designed for these electric sprayers. It's just supposed to keep the paint from sticking to all this little stuff in here. Let's check that out. Okay, so it comes with a little wrench so you can change the nozzles out. And then this cut and this holds everything down. That's what's all in there. And this is where you're putting that lube. You're trying to lubricate all these parts. If you notice, it has some O-rings right there. So a lot of times when they make this, they don't know how long it's gonna sit on the shelf. So it could have some kind of special lubricant. And that's what we gotta wash off before we start to use this. And it has an exploded diagram in case you get confused. So I mean, it can fall apart, be careful. We keep this assembly all together, stick it back in there. This kind of holds it all in place. So we're just gonna try to spray it with the nozzle it came with first. Get that off and we can just feel on these parts that has a whole bunch of that oil on there. It just feels like some light, like a three in one oil. Okay, so I'm just gonna put like a little tiny bit of Dawn in there and hot water we're going to wash it out got that warm soapy water so this piece comes off make sure it's pressed in there firmly so now we got our warm soapy water we are literally trying to give all this internal stuff a bath and get that factory oil off of there so we have the gun plugged in the wall now so i had to go get these if you're a harbor freight and gonna buy one of these you better make sure you get some of these too. Okay, so we ran the soapy water through it and the clean water. Everything is clean back to normal. Now it says we need to dry it off. So we got everything dried off. And right here is saying that we need to add some lubricant oil here. So we're going to take this out. We're going to put two drops in that hole right there. One, two. And it says to just assemble the gun. So it comes with a little viscosity cup and whatever we're spraying, in this case, water base, 20 to 25 seconds. So let's check that out. So absolutely not, not even close. So, I mean, it's it's been like a minute. So in another video, I referenced thinning this with antifreeze. That's the information I got from going on one of these tech guru websites where a guy that's making an article about painting that's never painted in his life. So I found out it's windshield washer fluid. Now windshield washer fluid, you're going to pay attention to when it freezes. So at 20 degrees Fahrenheit, I live in Houston, Texas. That's telling me that this may be about 20, 25% alcohol. So that's the point of why they use this because it's water mixed with alcohol and the alcohol is going to evaporate a lot faster to dry faster. So what I know about painting is that I don't want this to dry fast. The slower it dries, the smoother the finish gets. So using windshield washer, in my opinion, absolutely never going to do it in my life. Maybe if I was painting a bunch of baseboards, a flat latex, and I needed to get a whole bunch done, then maybe I would do that. But for normal DIY painters, why in the world would you want your paint to dry faster? Absolutely not using this. So in this situation, consistency no longer matters. We don't need to add five ten percent water we just need to thin it till we get the viscosity just right i'm not even going to get the stopwatch i'm just going to run it through and eyeball it i'm i'm kind of irritated with this 19 20 21 22 all right i'm going to go with that okay i'm not mad anymore you seen how much water we added to get the viscosity right it is a hundred percent acceptable to say eyeball whenever you're talking about these measurements because you might be using a different brand. It might be a little bit thicker. Consistent measures out the window. We're trying to get the viscosity right. So when you hear somebody talking about eyeballing measurements, it's 100% acceptable in this. You will never see a commercial painter out there mixing off of these numbers. They eyeball it, use viscosity cups. So 
Don't hate when somebody says eyeball measurement. Let's just get it in there. All right, so first time in my life using this gun, let's see what kind of pattern we get. want to have you a roller or a brush ready because it will spurt some paint out so in other words we need to get our fan started and then go to our projects all right so we need to do some more testing on this so first of all it throws a round pattern and it throws a lot of paint out there one of the main issues i'm having with it is it wants to spit and burp or cough and i'm thinking that we need to start our fan right here and then bring it up onto the project the directions say to start your fan in your motion. In other words, you don't hit the trigger and then start moving. You move, hit the trigger, and start spraying like that. So we're going to figure out if we can do it like that or we just have to start it off the project and then enter the project with the spray fan. So I was watching some videos of people spraying with this on YouTube. So we need to address those videos because this is a new one and you've probably already seen those. Whenever you're spraying paint with anything, and you are getting a little fan like this on your project, you are not painting correctly. In some of these videos I was watching, people paint with it and they're spraying a little bitty fan like that. That is not painting, okay? Because you have to do a 50% overlap. So what are you gonna do? Just to paint this sheetrock, you're gonna go 800 times back and forth. That's not how you paint, okay? So a lot of these more expensive electric sprayers, the point is to throw a lot of paint, with a huge fan so that you can just do one coat and it cuts time down so you're not out there all day painting you know a room you paint it in a few minutes so i'm going to put some paint in here right now straight out of the can and let's see what it looks like when you spray th too thick and the wrong way okay so see paint right out of the can way too thick to spray So I just thinned it with water. It's a lot better now. Let's see if that was the problem. So now we're gonna play with the regulator. We're gonna see if this is regulating air, or fluid, or both. I have no idea. I'm just gonna turn it down to zero to start. This thing works so freaking good. Okay, so that's when it was too thick, but when we thinned it out, look at what we did right there. And we did it instantly. Okay, so let's pretend that's like a bathroom wall. Let's see if we can at least consistently spray one wall with that gun. So the reason it started squirting is because it used all our paint up. I'm only putting a little bit in that at a time. Okay, so what I'm finding out that it started that spurting stuff because it was running out of paint. Now we're going to pretend this is like some cabinets. We got the viscosity just right on that paint. It's white. We have the cup three quarters full. That was why it was spurting because it was running out of paint because we only poured eight ounces in there. Let's see if it works. Okay, so it 100% passed the test. So all this trial and error to figure out how to use this spray gun. So let's talk about what I would use it for and just a little bit of advice in case you're new at this. Okay, so let's say you're doing some cabinets, some shelving, 
For the priming, absolutely 100%. For final finishes, absolutely not. So door jams and trim, if they're not installed, absolutely. But if you're doing them on a house, you're going to have to do a whole bunch of masking. In that case, brushing them all would probably be a better idea. Okay, so see my door jam I just got through painting by hand because it only took like 10 or 15 minutes to do it. Final finishes on a front door, absolutely not happening. So what about semi-gloss or flat interior doors? Man, I, I really don't think it'd be, I, I really wouldn't feel comfortable spraying a door, okay? Okay, so to paint my brand new front door with that gun, absolutely not. Let's say we were going to sandblast and we wanted to paint little cast iron stuff, absolutely not. Okay, so let's say you have an old wall like this and you want to save it. You wanted to put some kills on it. Absolutely yes, 100%. Sheetrock walls we want to paint. Absolutely yes, 100%. But you're going to have a problem if you're trying to paint the ceiling with this gun. So let's say you were trying to restore some windows like this. Absolutely not. And I am not restoring these. I hate these windows. Let's say you were doing some siding, which I'm going to be doing siding on my house. Yes, you could use it for that, but you would definitely need a paintbrush and a roller ready to assist your paint job. Okay, so let's just say I wanted to paint my fence I just built. Absolutely, yes, 100% with that gun. But like I said, you may need a roller and a brush to assist the paint job. So ultimately, this gun is perfect for bigger jobs, for fences, for garages, for sealing any type of plywood, stuff like that. Great. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I went through some headaches to figure out how to use it, but it was all worth it. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.